What up, y'all? This is Mongo. All right, so we're going to do a quick video on Val Venus and his uh, re response to the Nyla Rose incident in AEW. Or basically, the Nyla Rose winning the AEW Women's Championship. Um, I don't agree with everything he says here. So this ought to be pretty interesting. Um, the first tweet that, well, I guess it's from Facebook, is on, or it's, it's maybe, maybe a tweet, but it's up on the screen. Uh, he says, what the F is happening? in pro wrestling these days. Insane. I feel for all the real females who are denied the opportunity to shine because a male has been given the women's title. Fairness is the issue. Social conditioning is the goal. To all the real women who worked so hard to get where you are, my heart goes out to you. You will have to wait for the writers to stop their BS before you can continue to thrive. Okay, so he got a lot of backlash for this. Um, there was a lot of subsequent, subsequent um, comments. We're going to go through some of those. I didn't bother to collect everything. I mean, the, the sentiment is pretty much the same in all of them. He pretty much stood his ground. He didn't apologize. So let's let's see what, what more he had to say. Um, the big Valboski is all pro-women. When I turn on the mind-numbing boob tube to watch two women wrestle for the championship, I expect to see real women wrestling. Uh, sadly... Real biological women have always had to fight under the underneath the regular subjugation by the male species. When the female species rises up from that power, from that man-powered subjugation, a man simply pretends to be a woman and steals the empowerment of women out from underneath them. Now, here's where I, me, and the big Valboski separate. Um, he is obviously a male feminist in a traditional sense. Um, what some people will call the turf. Uh, I am not. I don't believe in this whole male subjugation of women garbage. But um, we do agree on the Nyla Rose situation. I'm going to be very nuanced here. Uh, I'm not going to be vulgar and or in any way, quote unquote, transphobic. Unless you believe that biology is transphobic, then it doesn't matter what I say. But for other people who might be a little bit open-minded on this thing, because um, there's two schools of dogmatic thought on the subject, and it's basically religion versus religion. Um, to believe that a man can become a woman is religious, is magic. Okay, there are over 1,000 differences between men and women. You can't change five of them and then think that you magically turn a man into a woman. It doesn't work like that. <clears throat> there's just too many differences between men and women. But... Also, people have the right to be whoever they want. So Nyla Rose has the right to wear whatever clothes Nyla Rose wants to wear, change their name if they want, and all that stuff. And that's on a personal level. Now, when we're talking about diff this different subjects, we're talking about it through the kayfabe world of wrestling and the real world. Now, in a lot of the subjects, the conversations that I've had with people about this subject, it all boils down to, well, it's kayfabe. Um, that's, some, so that's some people's uh, way of clouding this subject. That Nyla Rose is k it's k it's kayfabe. It's not, you don't have to believe that Nyla Rose is a real woman because it's kayfabe, it's on TV, therefore it's not real. It's like, okay, fine. I can agree with that, okay? Um, again, I'm expected to believe that Undertaker can shoot lightning bolts crawl out of the grave i'm expected to believe that you know certain people have magic powers you know that uh that a real black man was somehow an ugandan giant that a samoan is a sumo wrestling champion from japan there's a lot of ridiculous things i'm expected to believe as a wrestling fan i accept that now the difference here is that the nyla rose situation bleeds over into real life it bleeds over into real life simply because you are expected, not really expected, but it is demanded of you to accept a premise that you do not believe. And that is that Nyla Rose is a woman. Okay. Or a bio, to start her biology doesn't matter in this sort of formulation of this idea. People don't want to hear it. They don't care. It's not about biology and science. It's about social pressure and politics. And which is which needs to get the fuck out of wrestling, but it won't go anywhere anyway because it's something that the fans have decided they're going to interject into wrestling. 
So now anytime a woman is on the screen, we have to hear about how she has extensions or how scantily clad she is or whether she got boob jobs or nose surgery or and all of that, all of that nonsense. OK, it has completely toxified women's wrestling completely. You know, if a woman's match is 15 minutes and a man's match is 16 minutes, all of a sudden we have to hear about how the WWE or AEW don't care about women's wrestling and it's unfair that they're giving the men more time and there's not enough women's matches and it's just, it's the wrong kind of stuff to be discussing um, when we're talking about wrestling. So I would really not, really rather not be making this video and I could choose not to. But I feel like some, some subjects need to be taken head on. And this is a subject that needs to be discussed head on. And it's not personal against Nyla Rose. Because I think that it's unfair for them to put Nyla Rose in this position. Because when they announced Nyla Rose was signed, that it, this person was going to be wrestling in the women's division, everybody knew it, was all, it came out almost immediately that this person was trans. Okay? And that almost immediately started this whole conversation about whether a trans person should be a, a women's wrestler. Okay? So here, Val Venus again says, men and women are mechanically different. That's true. I'm okay with women competing against men in men's sports. I am not. If the women is up for the challenge, then hell yeah. But when a man competing against women in women's sports is factually cheating for victory, it's not fair to the women athletes. <clears throat> Here's also where we differ. Um, I don't think that it's cheating. Uh, it's only cheating if the person switched just for that, for that reason, okay? Just for the reason to win. And we see that people are doing that now. People are just using these laws, which the state had no right to decide who's a man and who's a woman anyway, and decide to let men go into women's spaces and break their weightlifting records and track space records and all this stuff because people are afraid to say no. That's really all this is about. There's people out there who are afraid of saying no because there's political and social backlash for saying no. And because they are afraid to say no, they have just let women's sports become infested with guys in dresses. But there are some people out there who are legitimate, who legitimately feel that way. There is a, a great depth of science involved with the trans, the trans in sports thing. The bottom line is wrestling is not real. It does not matter. The trans in sports stuff does not matter because wrestling is not real, but you cannot put Big Show in a dress and then tell me to call him Mrs. Big Show and that Mrs. Big Show versus Alexa Bliss is a respectable women's title match. No, that's just not how it works. I've seen people trying to say that <clears throat> Nyla Rose versus Alexa Bliss, not Nyla Rose, but um, Nia Jax versus Alexa Bliss is the same as Riho versus uh, Nyla Rose. It's not. That's also unfair to put Nia Jax in this situation. Nia Jax is a female. Nia Jax is a big female, but Nia Jax is a female. It is unfair for you to try to use her as a standard for something that it is not the same. Okay, Nyla Rose is not Nia Jax. It's not the same. Let's see, what else Valvinus had to say? It's the irresponsible use of entertainment to socially condition human brains into accepting injustices. I agree with this. And I think that's what this is. It is AEW and their fan base have gotten so woke that this kind of stuff is what they're about. They're about this kind of shit, about fighting injustice and all that bullshit. Instead of let's put on an entertaining wrestling show, it's all about wokeisms and anti WWE isms and all that bullshit. And the, the eyeball thing about all of this stuff is that WWE was way ahead of the curve on this. You know, they had men wrestling women decades ago. You know, not just China either, but they had Jacqueline as a, a woman's like cruiserweight. She was a cruiserweight champion. You know, they have been trying over and over again for 30 years to make women's wrestling work. You know, there was about two or three years during the downslide of the company in the mid 90s where Alundra Blaze was the women's champion. They was trying to get women's wrestling to work. But people had no interest in it. 
So they went away from it, and that's when all the lingerie pillow fights and all that shit started happening. So the idea that WWE is just some kind of arcane concept is not really true. You know, if you look at history, it's not really, it's not a fact. You have your sexual, sexualized women, you know, your beautiful women. You also have your wicked witches, your, you know, Sherry Martells and your Luna Vachans. You had more variety of women in the past. You know, you have somewhat a greater variety today where you still have your models like Mandy Rose and you have your actual athletes, you know, longtime wrestlers like Paige and Becky Lynch. But let's um, let's see what else we got here. Um, Val Venus continues. This is responsible entertainment portraying unfairness as factually unfairness, uh, not portraying unfairness as something heroic and good like AEW are doing now. Okay, so he's saying that Nyla Rose being born male is an advantage over Riho, who was born female. Um, that is true. But it's also, but it would be the same again if it were a bigger woman. Okay, now, Riho is small. You know, part of that is cultural. <laughs> Riho is tiny. And a lot of those Japanese women like Kairi Zane and Io Shirai, they're just really small. And even if she was a regular sized American woman, now there are differences between women depending on nutrition, uh, uh, national origin, race, and ethnicity, because, you know, different nutrients that they intake, different genetics and all that stuff. But you cannot be a genetically man, genetically male and be female. That just doesn't make any sense. But you can be a tall woman. Bianca Belair is a tall woman. Uh, Rhea Ripley is a tall woman. You know, both of them were born in Western countries with different but maybe similar nutritional diets, you know, and that's just how, how it is. But uh, I do believe that what he's saying is that people should not be cheering the Nyla Rose situation. And I think that Jim Cornette said that it should be portrayed, that you should use this to get heat. I don't think that that's an appropriate thing to do either. I think that splitting the audience this way, it can have some positive effects, but the company is expected to take a side. And that's another problem here, is that the company is going to be expected to take Nyla Rose's side. And they've already done so. There was a, a, a snapshot that was put on Twitter uh, right before AEW Dynamite started last week. It was uh, on AEW Dark. I don't have it here. But... Um, it says it was basically a, a, a guideline for how fans should behave in the building. It was done on dark for the people in the audience because I guess they kind of foresaw that when Nyla Rose won the title, there would be, pre there would be people who would be upset and complaining. That was a spoiler. And I said it when I saw it, that this is a spoiler. But I also find it very strange that the company... It's telling people how to respond to a situation that they're presenting. Imagine if Vince McMahon would have told you before Monday Night Raw that you're not allowed to boo John Cena, that you're not allowed to boo Roman Reigns, you're not allowed to say or do anything that they deem inappropriate. We're going to have a code of conduct. Then Vince McMahon would have been the, he's already the warlord of wrestling in their view. So how much more tyrannical could he be but this isn't the first time either i'm um, the young months ago the young bucks followed some guys on twitter uh the guys were yelling nyla rose is a man out of the crowd and the young buck says oh well we'll, we'll ban them forever from buying tickets to our shows and this is what the fans of AEW expect the company to do to when they see somebody being quote-unquote transphobic to to say hey we're on the side of our performer instead of saying they're in a performance they're responding to the performance whatever which is what they should do it becomes a well we have to side with our performers we have to be on the side of our performers and we have to react knee-jerk react to whatever is happening because we have to quote unquote set the standards it's like, well, no, that is not really your job. And that's really going to be a problem. Now, it, it might work for a little while. It might work for a little while.
But eventually it's going to, people are going to get sick, sick of it and they're not going to watch the show or, or come see the show anyway. If you're going to tell people how they can respond and what they can say and do to a program that they're paying tickets for, I mean, we had people who, who say, well, WWE is terrible. They were taking signs that says such and such and such and such. For years they've been doing this. Back when I went to WrestleMania 23, they used to take those TNA signs. People, because remember back when people was hyping TNA? Everybody thought TNA was the best shit on the planet. They used to try to sneak those signs in. You know, uh, Shawn Michaels feels AJ Styles and all that bullshit. And WWE would take those signs and people would say, oh, how unfair. I remember the old days of you could carry whatever sign you wanted into the building. You remember, it was about freedom. I get to be free to do whatever I want because I, I, I paid my ticket. But for some reason now, you can't have your own thoughts when you pay your own ticket. You're expected to continue doing whatever the company tells you to do. And the performer who made it public who they are, it's not like somebody outed them, right? The, the performer is open and public with who they are. Is, you know, sort of reveling in it. Instead of just accepting it as heat, it's being a, it's being treated as, you know, this person is an, is an endangered species, which is something that the other people don't get, right? Obviously, right? But, whatever. It's a really, it's a really bizarre situation. But like I said, it's very nuanced. I am not a, uh, a male feminist. I don't believe in the subjugation of women by men. I don't believe that shit. But I do believe that if you're going to hire somebody like Nyla Rose and put them in this, in this position, it is only fair that you give them the opportunity. It is not fair that you try to use this person for, 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 um, political gain and for publicity, which I still believe this is what they're doing. I do believe that because out of all the women wrestlers in the world, you find this person and sign them. And that's, that's a big, hmm, with all the resources that you have, these are, the, these are the people that you signed, you know, and I, I thought initially that they would give title, the title and the rose first. And maybe they thought about it, but then they said, hey, let's, let's, let's try to avoid that. And then with all the criticism of Riho, which is not Riho's fault. I mean, it's not Riho's fault. She's small. She's in the same situation. If you're going to hire her, let her do her job. You know, let her try to make her offense look legitimate. You know, book her to be, to look tough and unbeatable. I mean, she's supposed to be a champion. Why not? The fact that some people don't believe it and don't buy into it, it's just a fact. You know, some people just don't buy into significantly smaller performers fighting significantly bigger performers. They just don't. And there's nothing you could do about that. You can't just start calling people racist or sexist or heightist, whatever, or sizist, ableist or whatever, because they don't agree with you. Those are those are thought killing statements. And we want people to think if you really want to expand people's horizons, you wouldn't be labeling them and calling them names. And this which is, which, which is what happened to Val Venus. He got, you know, attacked by a lot of people online. Um, people were saying he was an asshole. He's a bad person. He's this. He's that. None of which has anything to do with him being right or right or wrong. It is all just a judgment based off of a political a political or well, I can say a religious belief that they just developed within the last two or three years. Because most, if you'd have said Nyla Rose is a man, 10 years ago, everybody who is mad at them right now would say, you're absolutely right. But today, because there's, because there's not an incentive, there's incentivized lying. That's the best way to put it. You're incentivized to lie. You get special access for being a liar. You know, you get, whoa, look at me points. Well, look how woke I am. You know, you get those kind of points. You get to continue being on your media press calls and all that bullshit. 
but you don't want to call bullshit on this. You know, and there's a lot of people who are upset about this stuff. Most of it is fake and phony because they would never date Nyla Rose if they had a chance to for obvious reasons. So they don't really believe it. You know, so <laughs> and since most of their, their their fan base is male, you would say like, OK, well, you date Nyla Rose. Oh, no, 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 probably not. For obvious reasons. Now, there's a hundred reasons why you wouldn't not be your type. You don't necessarily find Native, Native American women attractive. You don't necessarily believe that bigger women could be attractive. All of which you could be a, considered a bad person for, right? Because there's people out there who will judge you for not dating certain people. But it never really crosses anybody's mind that why you out here virtue signaling and saying that something is true and it's not. That it doesn't cost you anything. You're incentivized to lie. There is no, there is, there is more to lose to tell the truth than it is to lie. Or to believe the fantasy. Right? It doesn't cost you anything to just get on Twitter and say, Nyla Rose is a real woman. Blah. It doesn't cost you anything. Right? But if, you're, but if it was your daughter, you know, who lost a race to a biological male who was in the race, then you would feel differently. And that's, those are a lot of, that's a lot of what Val Venus was doing was talking about the race and then the bodybuilding. And I don't think all that stuff is important in the context of pro wrestling. Cause again, pro wrestling is not real, but at the same time, it is a corollary it's a parallel a little bit. And it's a social issue that I, no doubt AEW was looking at when they signed Nyla Rose and, and in doing this. But this whole situation has really caused a lot of blowback. It, it blew back on Jim Ross, who said that Nyla Rose was the king of the mountain. And people tripped out and said that Jim Ross was misgendering, which Jim Ross is too old to even know what the fuck misgendering even is. You know, it does... That kind of stuff, and it's a, a, almost weekly, it's, ex, it's exhausting, the social justice bullshit that goes on, mostly with AEW, but a lot of it is with WWE too. There was people, and it's not just Nyla Rose, there was people complaining that Bianca Belair lost to Rhea Ripley and how Naomi didn't get the title shot against Bailey and blah, blah, blah. It's, everybody's a racist, everybody's a sexist, everybody's a homophobe, a transphobe, an ableist, a heightist, a of this or that and all that bullshit and Saudi Arabia is blood money and all this garbage. It's just chill the fuck out, man. Chill out. Being a quote unquote good person is that's not something that somebody can, can label you. Who, nope. These people don't really know you. You can't label me a bad person. You don't know fucking know me. Okay. I need to be able to look in the mirror and say, have I done anybody any harm? No. Have I helped people? Yes, I have. Have the people I helped come out better? Yes, they have. But the story of people's lives is they think that they want to be able to tell other people that they're good or bad. You're a good person based off my ever-changing criteria, because again, five or ten years ago, nobody believed this shit. Okay? So it's all nonsense. And Val Venus really stirred up a, a, a hornet's nest. And bless him, because he's going to be dealing with this for a while. And a lot of people talk about his career is over. The guy probably hasn't worked in a long time anyway. He's probably financially independent. He, he doesn't care. You know, I, I, I doubt he cares about any of this shit anyway. It's not like uh, he was, he was going to get signed to AEW anyway. And then it, it kind of it's kind of bizarre that all the quote unquote good people want to blacklist folks for not agreeing with them. That's that doesn't sound like something good people would do. You know, good people don't have blacklists or block lists or are afraid of, of, of getting involved with discussions with people who disagree with them. That doesn't sound like something good people do. That's something like dogmatic Puritans would do. But like I said, whether you believe in good old JC, Jesus Christ, 
or you believe in whatever crap comes out of some university somewhere, you probably are in, in, in the midst of some type of religion. And you don't think about it. You just respond. You're just reacting. There are certain tenets that you just don't question. And this is for a lot of people. This is one of them. And this is why I really don't want to talk about this subject. And why this will probably be the only video I do on this subject of Nyla Rose. Because I don't want to continue going down this rabbit hole and having this argument every time Nyla Rose comes on TV. I do not care enough about Nyla Rose to go through that. I am secure enough in my response to this issue that nobody's going to come into this comment section or approach me on Twitter and be able to change my mind. Not because I'm dogmatic about it or have some type of fervent religious belief, but because the science is beyond clear on this. There is, there is no <laughs> change in between man and woman. You just can't do it. You can't do it. Now, maybe in the future, there'll be more technology where you'll be able to change. And, and that's really part of the issue here is that people are now becoming more malleable due through the technology that people are now open to accepting that sort of thing. But they also apply womanhood to 2D drawings where people are like, you need to respect women. Like it's a drawing on a piece of paper. It's a real woman. You drew it on a piece of paper. It needs to be a real woman. It's like, no, absolutely not. We've, we have, there's this, this syndrome of people who've just thrown their brain into the blender and decided that whatever somebody tells them, as long as it doesn't cost them anything, or as long as they get to attack somebody and be a part of a mob, they're going to go, they're going to go with it. Well, I'm saying I'm not with either mob. I'm with the truth. And the truth of the matter is, Nyla Rose was born male. If not, I will call Nyla Rose Nyla Rose. I don't care. I don't know what the person's real name is anyway, and I don't look that stuff up. I wouldn't have known about Nyla Rose if people hadn't told me about it. I will not comment on it on Twitter unless somebody retweets that crap onto my timeline, in which case I will have to respond, especially if they are being uh, dogmatic and retarded about it. You know? And I can respect when people don't want to be politically correct. All right. I, I can respect that. So while I don't agree with everything the big Valbowski said, I give him 100% credit for being man enough to come out and say something against it. Because he sees it the way I see it. This is social conditioning. It is political and social conditioning that we're going to attack people for having, for believing in biological reality that can be observably proven 99% of the time. It just does not make sense. Okay? Because your, your, your politics and your social reality, you believe one thing, doesn't make it true. For years, people used to believe in thunder gods. People used to believe that dancing created rain. There are now people who believe that crap again. It's not real. Okay, wrestling is not real. Thunder guys are not real. Men becoming women is not real. Women become men are not real. Okay, there are people who are born with either psychological defects or biological defects, physical defects, and those people should be treated with the utmost respect. But we, we can't have that conversation until you realize that there's a biological reality OK, and once you have the once you have that fundamental understanding, then you can add nuance to it. Like you can't build a pizza without a crust. You need to have the crust. You need to have the base. And your base is bullshit. Your base is there's no difference between men and women. They're interchangeable. No, that's not true. Whatever you're trying to build an argument on is going to fall apart the moment somebody mentions one or two things that you can't answer. We've seen people do this all the time. They go on these TV shows and the moment that they get pressured about the difference between men and women, they crumble like a Jenga board. And all of a sudden it's you're a transphobe. You're a homophobe. Why are you such a bigot? You hate everybody. That's not a that's not an argument. OK, that's that's thought killing. That's conversation killing. That's labeling. 
That's an attempt to socially shame and politically pressure somebody into agreeing with you. That's the wrong way to look at things. And somebody can be wrong. They could be, they could be completely wrong. They could come at you with the Bible and say, God created man and woman. And that's why there are, it can't be both. Because God never said that it can't be both. God never said anything about you can't be a man and a woman. In fact, God says that Eve was born from Adam's rib. So obviously there must have been some feminine qualities to Adam if he could, if his rib could create a woman. That's the wrong thing to look at. The right way to look at things is, look, we know males and females before they are born. You don't even need to, that assigned at birth junk is garbage. We can tell if you're a male or female before you are even born. And it's not just uh, whether you have a penis or not. That's not the case. Okay. Yes, we can talk about people who have damaged penises or women who were born without uteruses or you know, people who have double mastectomies and all that stuff. We can, but again, you need to have the base. The base is there are males and females. That is the biological reality. Now, you want to add your, your toppings onto that about, you know, and I saw a guy on the Joe Rogan podcast was saying, like, you know, how is Arnold Schwarzenegger and Andy Dick the same? And you say, like, well, what are you talking about? There's, they're both men, yeah. But when you look at all of the differences between men, that's just because you are both men don't mean you have to look the same. People are not created in a factory like Ken dolls that are all the same size and all the same shape. No, that doesn't make sense. To think that doesn't make sense. Not all lions are the same size. You know, not all, not all tigers are the same. Not all elephants are the same size. Why are we applying that sort of reality to human beings? That all human beings have to be the same size, the same shape, look the same, be everything the same? No. You're in a box, but it's in that box, there's a hundred thousand different varieties of woman. There's a hundred thousand different varieties of man. But you need to understand that you are in one of these boxes. And if you don't want to be, that's fine. People can say, I'm non-binary. I don't believe in any of that stuff. That's fine. Because I don't believe in pushing you into that stuff. You can believe whatever you want. That's why I say, if you want to be a, if you want to be a Muslim... You want to be a Muslim? That's fine. You want to be a Buddhist? That's fine. You want to be a Christian? That's fine. All of this stuff is fine. But reality is what it is. And you have to build upon reality. So, I, again, I give credit to Val Venus for, for saying what he said. Don't agree with everything he said. Um, I'm pretty sure that this isn't going to win me any fans because a lot of wrestling fans tend to be primarily leftist. I don't care. Um, so try to have fun. Don't let the promotions tell you how to think and feel. You're allowed to have to think and feel whatever you want. So if you're one of these people who are, who want to chant by Nyla Rose as a man, I would rather you didn't because it, it does get obnoxious. But if they're going to sit there and lecture you, you have every right to say, to reject their lecturing. You have every right to reject their lecturing. All right, so like, share, and subscribe.